Okay, any questions? So if no, let's continue the wires model, right? So why it was not important in the past because they are really just parasitic. Transistor was dominating, right? It have been many decades. All people spent a uh, time on that. The back end people are not important at all. I mean, not that important in the foundry, right? The most famous people are those who design the transistor. But nowadays, they are very important, right? So first of all, um, how do we model the wire? Right? We just think of a very simple one. We say that, okay, I have a driver. What is a driver? Driver may be an inverter, an or gate, main gate, right? But we always just use inverter for simplicity. This is a driver, right? And then you drive a very long line. How are you going to model the delay of this driver? So we can use the so-called lump model. So when the resist, why resistance is small, right? So here we ignore the wire resistance. I just call it out, right? Then what will be the delay, anyone? We just discussed last time how, how you calculate the delay. Oh, it goes RC. RC. But we have 0 0.69 RC, right? Because? Line two. Uh, say again. Is it because line two is 0 0.69? Uh, because of the definition, a uh, lot too. Yes, 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 correct. That is the right. Because the definition is we only want to drive for VDD to VDD over two. So you get a lot too. Yes. This is a lump, right? But what is our drive, right? I hope that you know what we are talking about. Our drive is just this. For example, you are, let's say you try to charge up you go from one to zero, then this is off. Then you charge from zero to VDD divided by two. This is our drive. How do you find our drive? Oh, I gave you already last time. You use this equation, right? It go from VDT to VDD over two across the source string. Right? So that's you get the R drive. So now you're ready. If I ask you what is the delay time for inverter driving this long resistor, long wire, you already know what is the delay time. 0 0.69 R drive C lump. Okay. Everything has a reason. Now I, I hope that you can see the connection. I, I, I think that at the first few class, some of you feel very boring why we're doing all this device stuff. But now this out drive is not something different. I hope that you can imagine that it's related to this transistor, okay? Now, but what if it is not a lump one, right? Oh, oh uh, yeah, like this one. For example, I want to drive from R to I. I want to see what is the delay from R to I. This one is very complicated. You need to solve all the differential equation, right? Spice will do it for you, no problem, right? But as a human being, we want to have some insights and also have some quick calculation, right? In the past, they don't have computer. You come up with model that is good. Now we have a good computer. We still need the model because they give us the insight. Now I cannot say I ignore R2, R, I, R2, R3, R4, right? Because they are all significant. I cannot just say, oh, I'm charging up C1, C3, C4, just add them together. For example, this is a possibility. You might be trying to drive a gate. Here I have a gate. And then eventually I drive an input of the LAN gate. Uh, here may be a 
input of, I don't know, 10 input NOR gate. How do I calculate the de delay from R to I? I cannot lump them together. Very difficult, okay? So this is a very important thing. You are sure to see something like this in the midterm, Elmo delay formula. Okay, so it come, Elmo come up with a way to help us to understand this. So how do we calculate use his approach? First, we need to need to know the limitation, right? In all the network I'm going to give you, or you're going to solve, or you, where you can apply Elmo, you make sure you have to check. First is single input node, right? Do not tell me that, okay, I have a signal coming here and then another signal coming here. Uh, what is the delay? We cannot use it. All the capacitor need to connect to ground. You have a capacitor connected between one and three, we cannot use it neither. But this is okay usually, because we usually uh, only care about uh, the ground capacitor. Y to Y may have capacitance. In that case, you cannot use it. Maybe nowadays it became more difficult because they're closer to each other. But some most of the time is the ground plane, right? No resistive loop, right? You do not just come here and suddenly add another resistor back. Then we cannot use it. Okay, so what is the, how do we calculate this Elmo delay, right? The first thing is that we need to define something called shear path resistance. So we have many nodes. What is the shear path resistance between I and the other node? And we just add them together. That is the shear path resistance, right? For example, let's say, uh, our shear between two paths, between path out to I and out to four. Can you tell me what are the resistors shear between out to I and out to four? I one and R two. R, R1 and R what? Say again. R, R1 and R3. R3. Right? Let's say it's right. Okay. Yeah. The, the curve, right? We just write it. Here. This is from R to I. Okay? So this is blue. Right? And then this is from R to four. This is red. And definitely I see that they only share the R1 and R3, right? You find that many of the electrical engineer class right, are very easy, even a kindergartner to do it. The difficult part is you need to understand it and follow instruction clearly. Right? For this type of question, I expect everyone can get a full score, but always there are some students did not, either they did not study or either they get confused. So please really understand how to do it step by step, okay? And then Elmo tells us that if that is the case, you go over all the capacitor. For each capacitor, right, there is a path. You just find the sharing resistance with the, the destination you want sum up this RC delay, then you get the delay constant. This is just the uh, delay constant. This is not the delay. Delay constant will be 0 0.6 times it, 6, 9 times it, okay? And it, again, remember this is just an approximation, okay? So this gives you the time constant. I keep not saying the right word, time constant. This is time constant, not the propagation delay. You can time 0 0.69. Is this clear? Like, let's understand a little bit why the shear resistance is a problem. Like, think about this. If I want to charge up CI, if I don't charge up C3, can I charge up CI? 
impossible, right, by physics. If I, I want to make C I to 5 volt, then C V has to go to 5 volt first. If C V always at 0 volt, how can I charge C I to 5 volt? So it means that this C3 is affecting my time because I need to charge up C3 first through this shear resistance. Once this charge up, then I can charge up mine. So you can think about the reason why uh, we care about the shear resistance. And same for C2, right? But it only, uh, it only, only the shear path that has an effect because I just need to charge up at this point, right? I, maybe I did not explain very clearly, right? but that is how it works. So let's try an example. Try the delay from R to I. So what do I do? Remember here it say summation C and then all the shear resistance. So very easy for me. I just write down all the C at C1, C2, C3, C4, and CI. Do not forget about yourself, your, your own burden, not just other people affecting you, right? So CI itself is affecting the delay. Why is the shear resistance between the path from R to C1 and R to CI? Anyone? And this R1? Just R1. Thank you, right? This is R to R1, this is R to I, so only one, okay? How about R2? What's the shear resistance between this R to 2 and R to I? R1? R1 only also, R2 is not shear, right? How about R3? Uh, R3 thank you thanks for answering right so i mean if you can answer you can do the exam question pretty well i guess right what else how about r3 to r4 to r i i mean share r1 and r3 r1 and r3 only also then how is the shear resistance between r to i and r to i r1 r3 and r i thank you exactly I get all the CR, add them together. That is equal my tau D. Is this okay? Any questions? <laughs>